hundred years, and they are going to take you on this visit. And of course, uh, later on, whenever we have a moment, we are going to do the other. So please go ahead. Over to you, Sonia. Hello, everybody. Good morning from Sun. Hello, Ashok. Hello, Aki. Can you hear us? Hello. Yeah, very well. And today we can see you much brighter than yesterday. Brilliant. So over to you, Ashok. Yeah. So hello, everybody. Uh, good morning from Sun and good afternoon noon at India. Uh, I'm Ashok Kumar. Today, I'm going to show you CMS experiment. My colleague Archie will assist me and you to show you the different parts on the slides as well as things on the surface. Archie, to you. Okay. So I start from here a little bit introduction and in the meanwhile, uh, Ashok and uh, Naomi will go downstairs and will show you the experiment. So uh, what we are doing here, so we have uh, this tunnel as you can uh, see on the screen. Okay. So this is uh, called the Large Hadron Collider. Uh, hadron here, we collide the proton uh, proton uh, with the, at a very high energy. So this is a 27 uh, um, kilometer uh, tunnel. And uh, we uh, collide the protons inside this tunnel at a very high energy uh, speed close to the velocity of light. And uh, then at uh, four points, we, uh, we collide the, uh, the, the proton. And these four points you see here, uh, there are four uh, experiments. Mm, uh, so, so you see here, uh, here is our uh, experiment, which is the CMS. And uh, um, uh, in parallel, there are other experiments, uh, which you can see here, Alice, which is uh, dedicated for the high uh, heavy ion. Then there is uh, Atlas, which is uh, same as like CMS, and then LSCB, which is uh, another one. So these are the four points where the proton collides, and then we, uh, uh, as a result of these collisions, uh, we uh, whatever comes, we detect them with these help of the experiment. So our experiment is the CMS. Uh, compact muon solenoid. So why we call it so compact means uh, this is a very compact experiment. So this weights uh, around 14,000 ton, but it has a, um, a length of 15 meter and a height of 21 meter. So uh, you see that uh, such a, a heavy, exp uh, heavy experiment is uh, lying in a short, uh, in such a small volume. Then muon. Uh, so uh, muon, uh, in order to detect the muon, this is one of the more uh, uh, biggest part of uh, CMS. And then the solenoid. So solenoid uh, is the uh, the the uh, solenoid which are we, which we are using in the CMS is the uh, one of the biggest one. So we have a magnetic field of around three point eight at Tesla, which is uh, this magnetic field is 100,000 times more than the, uh, the the magnetic field of the Earth. So now you can imagine that how big is the magnetic field that uh, we have here. So uh, in order to uh, uh, create such a big uh, magnetic field, we use a superconducting magnet. So there is a coil and uh, there are the optical fibers and then when uh, the uh, high uh, electricity is uh, passed through these coils, then there is uh, this magnetic field produced, which, uh, which is uh, 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 around 3.8 Tesla. So then you see in uh, on the in the slide, there is uh, this uh, magnet, uh, this the experiment. Uh, CMS, which, uh, okay, so the, in the center, there is this uh, beam pipe, and then uh, the uh, it is surrounded by the tracker, 
okay so now you can see the zoom version so yes so here is the the, the first part which is closest to the uh, to the beam pipe is the is the tracker which is made up of silicon and uh, silicon pixels and uh, strip detector so these are uh, the one that uh, gives us the um, measurement of the position and the momentum and as this uh, this part of the detector is closest to the to the beam pipe where they they receives the uh, highest amount of background and the radiations uh, so yes um, then uh, outside this tracker there are uh, calorimeter so what what the calorimeters do they use them to measure the the energy. So there are two types of calorimeters, the uh, electromagnetic calorimeters and then the um, HCAL, the hadron calorimeter. So uh, why we have these two type of calorimeters? So in the electromagnetic uh, 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 calorimeters, we um, used uh, we used it to me uh, to measure the energy of the electrons and photons. And in the hadron calorimeters, we used uh, we use it to measure the energy of the photons and uh, uh, sorry uh, the pion uh, pions, kions, and uh, mm, the hadrons. Uh, then uh, uh, all these uh, three, um, uh, the uh, the HCAL, uh, electron calorimeter, positron calor uh, had electromagnetic calorimeter and the tracker, these are situated inside the superconducting uh, solenoid. And then out, uh, as you can see here, so all these detectors are inside uh, the uh, the magnet and then um, outside there is a return yoke so the the purpose to uh, for this return yoke is to contain to contain the magnetic field uh, because uh, the in the coil we generate this magnetic field then we have to direct and contain this magnetic field inside so here you can see in the in the red color this is the the, the return yoke which is the heaviest part of the cms experiment and uh, inside this uh, return yoke we have also the the muon detectors because muons uh, are the particles which are uh, 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 we, we, which travel a long distance and that's why they are uh, they, okay so then uh, Ashok is here and then we go to them uh, he's uh, down, right? Yes, he's in the cavern. He's in the cavern. Oh, you didn't show us the lift. That was a nice move. Okay, so there is my colleague who has already shown us the lift. You've seen the film Angels and Demons? Yes. Okay, so the lift is in the cavern. Okay, so we have the lift in the cavern. Okay, so the lift is 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 in the cavern. Ashok, you hear me? Ashok, you hear me? So we are fortunate in one way, also unfortunate in other ways, that um, LHC is not working at the moment. So we are able to go down and able to show you the experiment. So until uh, their uh, connection is back, we continue here. So I was talking about the muon detector. So in uh, this is one of the biggest part of the CMS experiment. That's why CMS compact muon solenoid. So we have four different type of uh, muon detectors that we are using in the CMS. So in the barrel, we have the drift tubes and also the resistive plate chambers. And in the end cap, we have uh, again, uh, the uh, cathode strip chambers, the uh, resistive plate chambers, and then the, the new detectors, uh, um, gas electron multipliers, the gems, uh, which you are going to learn now. And uh, Arshana Ma'am is one of the main uh, motivation behind uh, bringing these detector in, in the CMS. And also there is a lot of contribution from the Indian uh, institutes and uh, a lot of Indian colleagues are working on this one. So yes. Uh, 
so all of these muon detectors are the the the, the gaseous detectors and uh, then uh, okay so these are in the in this um, uh, return yoke and uh, now you can see that how this uh, big uh, big uh, weight of 14000 yes. ton is situated i think yes. they are coming okay yes. yes okay so we are in the tunnel we are 100 meter down and we have entered through a very, very secure gate. We have a, you know, eye scanner here. We have seen that we have scanned our eyes and we have come in and there was no signal. Otherwise you could have seen how we scanned ourselves. And now we are in the tunnel. And now let us have, let us try to go in and see the wonders, uh, wonder, one of the biggest wonder of the science in the, in the world right now. Let us go. Okay. So we are going, we are going in, we are going in the tunnel. And uh, you can see the echo coming out of the tunnel. I hope the signal is maintained. We are, we are going in. Okay. Okay, everybody ready? I am pulling it. Oh, wow. No, 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 I'm not able to open it. Yes. Finally, I did it. Okay, come. Now you see the CMS uh, experiment here. This is the CMS experiment. Right now, you can see from the top to bottom how big it is. And you can see the, the magnets inside which the beam pipe is entering. You are seeing, you know, different parts. Right now, you can see this red part, which is the yoke, actually the iron, which helps to maintain the magnetic field of the detector, it is the, called the return yoke for the solenoid. And you can see that height of the detector is roughly 15 meter. The length we will see is roughly 22, 23 meter. And you can see, you know, there is a big uh, industry-like atmosphere here where experiment is being maintained by powering different detectors, by cooling the parts of the detector, by water cooling or CO2 cooling or we have the gas going inside the detector for, you know, there are gaseous uh, counters which are helping us to detect muons. So this is, the, this is the biggest part you are seeing right now. And then we will go through uh, slowly through inside, you know, whatever part we can see on the balconies or on the surface. Uh, you can see, I can feel the magnetic field right now. For example, there is a strong 3.8, or you can say four Tesla magnetic field outside the, experiment we have only few milli teslas but in this few milli teslas also you can see you know this is just hanging here okay just hanging like this you can see the deviation okay like this it should be like this but see uh, like you can see the other one also you know this is this is you know they are not interacted they, they are just just try to see the orientation i'm down i'm not doing anything you know in the magnetic in the magnetic field lines if it is facing North, north, or south, south, they are being repelled actually. So, this magnetic field, this residual magnetic field is coming from the uh, four Tesla magnetic field of the detector. Now, we go slowly. If you see the blurred image, this means the magnetic field is, you know, trying to distort the magnetic field effect of the uh, devices inside the, inside the laptop, uh, sorry, inside the um, uh, camera and other stuff. So, this means the magnetic field is distorting. There is no, you know, loss of signal or anything. It is the magnetic field which is doing the effect on the electronics component because it has the signal. It has the electric signal which can be modified in the presence of the electromagnetic field. So let us see. We are we are underneath right now. I don't know how far we can go, but let us try to see. We are. I, you can see the dimensions. You can compare. I am roughly five feet uh, six inch. You can see the dimensions of the experiment. You can see the dimensions of the big experiment, how big it is. And each part, you know, CMS experiment is being devised by, you know, 2000 scientists, 1000 engineers, and roughly, you know, a thousand PhDs has been given. So how many people has been involved in this, you know, in the making of many parts of the detector? Archana Sharma he herself has worked for so long in devising different parts of the detector. There are different people who has, you know, for the years actually has been uh, has designed has been working has been making it operational to you know detect for detecting the higgs like uh, new particles in this experiment so this is the dimension real dimensions of the experiment actually 
now you can see we are going uh, underneath the experiment uh, you can see me from far because in the presence of the magnetic field roughly 500 milli tesla the signal may be modified uh, the uh, the camera may give you a blurred images but you can see from the bottom also there are different powering services there are cooling services which are going you know you can see the cooling system the cooling services which are trying to cool the different electronic components of the detector there are some gases as well which are coming uh, to the uh, to the different gases detectors you can see high voltage powering cables these are these are you know uh, powering cables which are being uh, you know that of the detectors which are being uh, designed and you know installed by archana herself these are powering cables uh, very thick ones and also these are you know right now carrying roughly up to 4 kilo volts of uh, um, uh, uh, high high voltage uh, which, which is being given to the detector elements so these are the powering um, uh, cables no, all these cables you can see, you know, like the veins, like the arteries in the body, they are serving, you know, uh, to make the detector operational. And so this, this routing schema is being designed in AutoCAD files to make it worth um, uh, commissioned, worth operational. And in a sense that all the, uh, you know, you can see the density of this going in, into the top or bottom or inside the detector. So this has to be designed in AutoCAD software in a way that we accommodate them in a dense way, in a you know scientific way. Okay. Now you see, I don't know uh, if they are able to see non-blurred images. You can see the foot of the experiment. You know, even if you see the blurred image, this is the effect of the magnetic field. This is the effect of the magnetic field. Okay. Now let us go. <clears throat> You can see the images, you know, uh, the foot of the detector. There are different uh, uh, wheels of the detector which are being combined to make it, you know, a big uh, the, uh, commutative detector. This is the other side of the detector. So we have walked through the, the bottom surface, roughly 22, 23 meter. Now you see the other side of the detector. Detector is being closed right now. If you want to see it open, it is only available between December to February. If some of you are lucky enough and uh, coming to CERN, they can see some parts of the open detector as well. Right now, you are you can see the side balconies where uh, powering and cooling and gas uh, controls are being designed. You can see these copper cables, uh, copper pipes. These are cooling and gas lines to the detector. You can see at the bottom different fibers coming out of the signal uh, signaling cables so these fibers are going to the back end back end means the computer and the uh, trigger part of the detector you will see details in archana's slides today uh, now you can see that how the beam pipe is coming so lsc is 27 kilometer and we are reaching here in the cms which is called 0.5 so we are reaching here so we you have seen the one side here and another side we have seen in the uh, first part of the cavern. So you are reaching here and you are colliding at the center, the proton and proton at 13.6 TeV. You can see at the at the, at the top, the shaft, the well-like structure, Domi, they can see the shaft, from which the experiment has been lowered in 2006, 2007 to 2008, and then the detector, the different wheels of the detector has been assembled in the cavern. Is the signal enough? Are they able to hear us? Very good. Because uh, we are in the cavern, we are in the magnetic field, we are 100 meter underground. So, you know, signal can be distorted with the effects which are scientific actually. So, you can see the big surface here. You can see when we move different parts of the detector, we take out this uh, this uh, iron plates and we move the different wheels to the sides. We open the detector and work to install detector or maintain different parts of the detector. So you see, we can take out these plates and move the detector like this. You can see at the foot, the sports to the different wheels of the detectors, the iron sports. The detector is itself 12,000, you know, roughly 13,000 ton. So it is a, you know, big iron and big uh, heavy detector. So to move it, you have a dynamical uh, system. 
and you move it like the you know very very slowly towards the towards the end and also you open different parts of the detector by by expertise which is being maintained by the cms uh, engineers okay anything here we can show or is there any more curiosity because then we will go to the surface and we will show you from the surface how our uh, shifters are controlling the different running conditions of the experiment over to you archie wonderful uh, ashok really wonderful i mean we uh, okay. really enjoyed this okay. uh, visit to the cavern now you will go to the control room i understand and archie is standing on the plug she wants to explain to us now how this plug is used because archie is on the surface 100 meters above and ashok is 100 meters down what connects these two and how did we build cms archie so um, on this surface where i'm i'm standing so we saw from uh, uh, from the cavern then there is a well like structure which we have called a shaft so what happened when the cms uh, was uh, constructed in 2006 or 2007 so it was the microphone close to your mouth archi so it's fine okay so it was uh, constructed into 15 slices uh, so uh, they have decided to construct these slices or the parts of the detector on the surface because it was uh, easy and then what uh, you are seeing here in uh, the surface where i am standing so this was this was open it's a little bit better yeah go ahead okay so this was open this is called the shaft and this they have used uh, to lower down the detector in these uh, 15 slices down in the cavern and then they have joined uh, these slices together to uh, to make the the, the detector so but uh, whenever there are the periods when we have to, uh, no beam we are not taking any data and the different detectors they need uh, uh, different kind of maintenance then we we can open these detectors open these slices and then we we, uh, we perform these uh, intervention and uh, yes so, so another reason for uh, constructed this detector like this was uh, it was uh, easy to uh, do such kind of uh, construction on the surface because of the services available so you can see on the camera that uh, ashok is going upstairs so here is the lift and here you can see they are at uh, minus 3 now you can see his uh, ascent you know in the lift you can see the exactly. depth of the cavern and now they are going upstairs so i think we are going to lose the signal okay so yeah so we continue here so um, we were talking about the the solenoid this is one of the more um, uh, the interesting part of the cms uh, experiment so why we need uh, such a big uh, solenoid why we need such a high magnetic field because you know that uh, whenever this uh, collision happened at a very high energy which is now 13.6 uh, tv so uh, the highly energ energetic particles are produced and uh, the may the goal of the cms experiment is to uh, detect to take the, the it it acts like a 3d camera which has to capture every particle so that we can um, reconstruct back, back the path of the particle and it will give us the the idea of the collisions so uh, and the bending of the particle depends on the magnetic field so higher is the magnetic field higher will be the bending and also because the particles will be highly energetic they will have the high momenta so the higher is the momenta lesser is the bending so now you 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 can imagine that why we need uh, such a high magnetic field uh then we come to the the, the data so you know that uh, we uh, now the experiment is stopped because of some issues in the in the lsc but uh, in general when we are uh, 
running the experiment, there are 40 million uh, collisions per, per second. So you can imagine that how big will be the data that we are, uh, we are collecting. And uh, one of the main challenges then to uh, store this data. So the data will be of the order of petabytes. And uh, then how and where we are going to store this data. So okay. the sun has decided to... Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. So now we are on the surface back, and now we will yes, we are seeing a small model here. So this is a very interesting place. Let us show that. Sorry, Archie, just a moment. By the way, her name is also Arjuna Sharma, so we call her Archie. Ashok? Yes. So this is the model of the CMS experiment. So if you we have seen this part of the CMS and we have seen this part of the CMS, but complete CMS is like this. Are the inner parts of the detection. This is the real model, you know, small model, but different parts are shown here. These are the, you know, cut out of the CMS. And then you can see the wall of the fame where most of the people are being pictured here. This, these are being uh, referenced here for, you know, people to see who are the main contributors in the CMS. And now we are going to the control center. Now we are going to the control room. Okay. We will we will not disturb the people here. We will just show you different people are working and try to control the detector, control the different parts of the detector, and they are taking day and night, you know, shifts here to you know maintain and make it operational uh, for the data taking. That's the control room. What you see here. Yeah, I think you can make the commentary. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, okay, so we have different people taking shifts here. We have the trigger shifter, we have a data acquisition shifter, we have the shift leader. So, and there are there is a technical shifter behind us. There is a run field manager trying to control the, uh, you know, uh, data taking of the experiment. So there are different shifter taking the controls of the experiment and try to, you know, day and night they try to control it and try to, you know, make it efficient uh, th uh, throughout the data taking of the experiment. No, right now we can show the magnetic field. So magnet is on and we have 3.8 Tesla magnetic field with 18,164 ampere current in the in the coils of the of the magnet. So right now this is the condition. This is idle and this we the experiment is on with 3.8 Tesla. So when we were showing you the experiment, the magnetic field was 3.8 Tesla there and the current was maintained in the superconducting magnet. There are different controls of the experiment. Hello. So here we have sub uh, subsystems being controlled by, you know, subsystem managers. So we have, uh, so there are different parts of the detector. So we have subsystems, the tracker, the chlorimeter, the muon systems. And right now people are trying to control their own subsystem, trying to maintain the subsystem and they have high voltage, low voltage, gas or cooling, you know, being monitored here. If there is any issue, we try to go in, try to, you know, try to poke in and try to uh, make the fixes in the experiment. Uh, anything more, Archana, from here? These are the conditions. For example, right now, there is no beam. Right now, there is there is no beam here. So you can see there is no beam right now. But if we meet there, there are collisions yes. right, being shown here. Yes. Yes. Yes, I can hear you, Archana. It's making the control room, nevertheless, of what's going on in the control room. People are sitting there, you know, constantly seeing data that's being taken. Is it good data or not? Which is a condition that will be big data. Running. And Ashok is trying to show us the status of what the Efforts, uh, I wish we could hear them properly, but let's see. You can see there is a gym running. 
Yeah. <laughs> yes, Jem is running. <laughs> okay, over to you, Archie. Right, Ashok, thank you. So, um, can you hear me, you well? Okay, so uh, now, as I said, uh, so as I said that uh, we were talking about the data that how how much data that we have we collect per year, then uh, we um, then uh, the, the the challenge is then how to store such a uh, big amount of data. So we have uh, the sun has created the different uh, centers. So these are called the tier centers. So the 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 first one, the uh, the lowest lev uh, level is called the tier zero, which is uh, at the sun. So all the data, all the raw data without any polishing, without applying any cuts, uh, they are stored at sun and uh, they make a copy of this data. And then this data is uh, sent to the, the other centers, which are called the tier one centers. And there are uh, seven uh, tier one centers around this world and uh, they, uh, this uh, the raw data is then sent to the okay the ashok is trying to show you something uh, ashok can you hear me i can hear you very well so now you can see some of the parts which are being installed in 2008 and 9 you can see one of the petal here so you can see different silicon sensors these are the real silicon sensors you can see the shiny surface because they are made up of silica. Silica is being seen on the beaches at the you know shining spots. So these are the silicon sensors. And what is there inside the silicon sensors? I can show you in the in the because you have to use the microscope to you know zoom the image. Now there is a microscope to which is seeing the um, uh, sensor. And now you can see what is there in the sensors. You have a small pixel sensors, and these pixel sensors are being bung bumped bump bonded with the electronics and the electronics take the readout of the signal being induced by the ionizing particles so right now you can see the real uh, real you know um, uh, pixel detectors which will be you know in, in some discussions of the slides so these are the real sensors which are being installed in the cms uh, way back uh, 20 years ago thank you very much from here Archie yeah now uh, over to you archie and archana thank you Yes, thank you, and I uh, really appreciate uh, the intervention. It was wonderful. Support Thank you, thank you, Archie. Sorry, we have very tight schedule and we are running late, so we need to now take leave from you. Ashok, Naomi, Sultan, Archie, thank you so much. Once again, big hand thank for them. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.